People had these finished records, and they were really good. So we decided it's kind of a, a burden sharing system. If we all shared in the dirty work for each of these, what are going to be five records, we'd be acting in a kind of collective or cooperative way. But the other key factor of it is that it's a very closed loop of people. Um, I play on Sammy's record. Sammy and I are Macrophone. Sammy plays with American film history. Sammy's a founding member of Battle Lab. We pool our expertise such as it is, and we pool our connections such as they are, and whatever goodwill it is that we've accrued here in our home area. But it's pretty exciting right now, and the reason that it's really exciting right now is that I know all five of the records that we're going to release, and they're heavy, they're formidable, incredibly well-developed, substantial pieces of work, and that's what's exciting. Life returns to semi-normal. I was noticing that the songs are really sugary, uh, in a lot of them. Uh, they have a lot of really good pop sensibility. But the lyrics are very dark. Like yeah. the lyrics are sort of seem a little have sadness or melancholy or darkness and the music is more like uh, right. it's just, upbeat or happy. Right, there's definitely yeah. a very happy record music. Right? I guess I like that in music. I like that sort of thing in music, that rub against those two things. You have a band, um, John's in that band. Yeah, John and my friend Mark Lerner, who I've heard of, who plays bass in the band, um, and uh, Eric Parker, who plays drums. Right. So they're all three sort of incredible musicians. Jason, Jason Cerubi. Right. I work with Jason very closely on the record. There's certain songs that were full band, certain songs that were just you, and I did sort of assume that the songs that were just you were done in a different way, were recorded in a different way, or like arranged in a different way. Yeah, they were me and maybe bringing in someone who I thought could help finish it, but I wanted to... And I sang a lot, like Choir Boy, you know, I did a little choir thing on, on it. But I also got Mark Lerner to play two different basses on it, and, uh, and on that one, uh, Dean Jones also plays keyboards. And it sort of ended up being a really, I think, weird-sounding song, which I, which I was happy about. Yeah. I'd love to ask you about Necessary Evil, but I'm going to go bold. Okay. When you rise again, sing your song for me. An oil truck in the driveway you're using oil which in itself becomes a necessary evil and just having to sort of live with things that you don't necessarily feel totally great about necessary evil. projects on all outside approval it's a necessary evil. In my okay i'm gonna be in the middle of a terrifying nightmare and i'm gonna wake up and i'm but I know it's good because it's, you know, it's opening up to something else. And I'm starting to see a lot more what you mean when you say it's, it's about maybe confronting a darkness or not, not just the darkness, but like something else within that, you know, or uh, exactly. I you know, think pushing against that. Yeah, confronting is a good word because that's what you start with, right? You have to confront it and then I, you know, as you get older you feel like, well, you know a little better that within that is something else. I know it's good The 
private explosions, uh, you know, I think of it as about being about um, sort of weathering kind of the intensity of a close relationship. A private explosion proud of the king. Well, I just wanted to say thanks a well, lot hey. for, you know, for letting me talk to you. Uh, well, thank you for listening to the record. And yeah.